Greetings and welcome to the first production of typesetting videos. And these are being done for Arandria scans. So everybody else, please keep your hands off it. The first one we're going to cover today is Photoshop tools. Now the reason we're starting with Photoshop tools is because I know everybody's anxious to get in there and actually go, okay, how do you justify the text? How do you do this? How do you choose the font, etc., etc.? But it really helps in the first place to know what Photoshop can do and what tools you're going to be using most of all. So that's why we go ahead and start here with the Photoshop environment. Now, there's a couple of tools and palettes that you're really going to be working out of a lot. The first, of course, is going to be your tools over here on the left, on the left side, this one. And you're going to be using those tool, a couple of the tools here a lot. Now that's, let's, let's bring that up here just a moment. That's this set of tools right here. Now the ones you're going to be using in particular are going to be the move tool. You're also going to be using the text tool a lot. Every so often you're going to be using other tools like for example the pen tool, very rarely though, the hand tool, and also from time to time you want me to take advantage of the note tool because with this you can create notes that you can then have the editor read. These ones down here deal with switching, basically determining the foreground and background colors and switching those I really don't recommend you use these because it's a very, with these it's very easy to get screwed up with what you're doing. Far better to work with what's called brilliance. I'll get to that later when we're talking about the dialogues. The other set of tools that you're going to use a lot is what's called the character palette. That's located right over here in this area, which is typically where it stays. Let me bring that out into the middle here more. Okay, this is the character palette that I'm talking about, and this is a close-up view so that I can better illustrate what we're talking about. Now, when you're working in the character palette, you're going to be concerned with, of course, this is where you'll be able to choose your fonts. This is where you determine your font size. Notice that it's in PX, pixels because the scale that you'll need to work with is pixels, not points. The reason for that is that you're working with web media, web graphics, rather than print media. So it's better to work in pixels. We'll cover that later. This is just an introductory. This here determines the spacing between the lines. Some of the fonts that you'll use will have less leading or spacing between the lines. You'll need to adjust that. Some of them have too much. This here is to adjust the space between the characters. This one here is to determine font height. In other words, you can take a font that's a particular height and you can actually make it larger. This can be handy for when you're working with special effects. This one here actually makes the font wider than it normally is. That also can be very, very useful for special effects. In here is the color. This can be very useful for when you're working with the color of the font. You just simply go into here and then you can work with the brightness. It's better not to use this for that purpose. It's better instead to work with this right here, what's called B or brilliance. Right now it's set for zero, which is black. When you want white, you change it to 100 as I'm doing here, and as you can see, it'll change to white. If you want gray, then all you have to do is enter 40%, and you'll get the um, pound sign 666 hex setting, which a lot of people specify for things like thoughts, or thinks, as it's called. Let's go ahead and put it back to zero, so we can see what we're doing here. Now, also, what's very important is paragraph. Now, paragraph you're not going to be using a lot because what you want to do in the beginning is to set it up for... Let's get back to that here. Oops, got away from it. 
let's get back to it. We're working in a Linux environment here, so I'm bringing up the image viewer. Okay, here we are. So what we want to do is when you're dealing with the paragraph, you want to make sure that the justification is centered. All your text is centered, not left justified nor right justified, but centered. And you just leave it that way from now on. Every text box you create will be centered. You also want to make sure that hyphenate is checked. This will help you take advantage of the auto hyphenation, particularly when you are justifying the text or making it fit into the bubbles later on. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, over here on the right hand side is going to be the layers that you're using. And there are ways to manipulate the layers. For example, here with the layers, it's you're able to access the dialog box that this is where you've got the how to get in trouble without really trying. This dialog box is going to be used a lot when you're doing your typesetting, especially when you're doing special effects or text over art. This is your mad scientist laboratory. The ones that you're going to be using most often here are drop shadow, stroke, and every so often you're going to be using gradient overlay, particularly for special effects. Another one that you want to be familiar with is your opacity. You're going to be concerned about the opacity not just simply for the in-text as a whole, but also the opacity for the fill. We'll get into that stuff later when we start getting into the stroking and the special effects and how to use gradient overlays. Let me give you an example of what you can do here with the character palette. We've got the one here, Photoshop Controls. Notice here how the S and the H and those are overlapping. Let's adjust the width. Now this is native to the font. When you type it with the font, this is the spacing the font uses. So we want to fix that. So let's change the spacing here using the letter spacing. And as you can see, that changes the spacing now so it's easier to read. You're better able to read it. That's an example of how the familiarity with these tools can really help you when you're doing the typesetting. The next session that we get into is how to set up the typesetting environment before you start doing the typesetting.